Good morning and welcome to online worship at Davidsville United Methodist Church. This is such an exciting week for us. First of all, this week is Pentecost, so we hope that you're wearing your red with us to celebrate Pentecost. And it is also Communion Sunday this week, so we hope that you were able to pick up your communion elements from the church. But if not, don't worry, go ahead and look around your house and find maybe some bread and some juice so that you can join with us later in the service as we partake in Communion Sunday. It is also the first week of our brand new summer sermon series, Voices of the Prophets. And this week we'll be hearing from guest pastor David Thayer. However, in all the joy and excitement of this week, we also would like to ask for prayers for our own Paul Radden, our pastor of music. Um, we just ask for prayers for his health. He is currently in the hospital, so thoughts and prayers are always are always appreciated and we are sending so our hopes and prayers to paul this week and now please join us as we enter into our new sermon series voices of the prophets
A reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own language. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're drunk, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show you portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, for the coming of the Lord, great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday, church! It's the birthday of the church. And I get to wear my favorite color, red. It's beautiful, beautiful day, a happy day, happy birthday, church. And indeed, uh, this day is much like a birth. Uh, I don't know if you were ever present in your children's births, but I was, all three of my children, I was in the labor and delivery room. I, I think I was the first generation of men about 40 to 50 years ago that got out of the waiting room and went into the labor and delivery rooms where I witnessed and helped my wife through her labor into delivery of my three kids. Uh, About uh, 40 40 some years ago, I took classes at the local hospital in in Clinton, Maryland, and uh, they were called the Ma's classes. I'm not sure if men and women are doing that anymore, the Ma's, and where you learn to breathe. And uh, Dr. Lamas says this will help the pain and it'll take your minds off of the stress of the birth. And so I uh, went in to, for the birth of my first daughter, Autumn, and I, I said, Renee, uh, breathe with me. And she didn't want to breathe with me, she wanted to kill me. And uh, it was about 18 hours of labor until my first daughter was born. and. Uh, took so long that they had to put her on a drug called Pitocin, which uh, all mothers dread to hear that word, uh, that drug, and it made uh, her contractions really violent, and uh, all I can say that she started to speak in in tongues, um, and (laughs) breathe, Renee, breathe. (laughs) Nope. Uh, um, I I told Renee after Autumn was born, um, I think it was harder on me than it was on you, and I'm surprised I'm still alive after I said that. Um, but uh, that was my first child, Autumn, who uh, will soon be 40, and then uh, my son was born backwards. 
And in the labor room, uh, we didn't know what to do, so we went to the delivery room really quickly, and the doctor said, lay on top of your wife, and I laid on top of my wife so that my son could be born, and it just slowly squeezed him out into the world and to life, and I was terrified, and I was exhausted. My wife looked like a refugee, and it was, it was an unbelievable moment. And then a few hours after uh, Chris was born, my son, I said, Renee, I have to go to class because I'm in the doctoral program, and I have to get to class. And so I went up to Catholic University, and um, there in class, I told the professor that I had just uh, gotten a newborn son. And you know what happened? All these priests and nuns stood up and clapped and applauded for this Protestant minister that was a Catholic university. And uh, I, it was one of the happiest moments of, of my life that I'll never forget that in my life. And then my last daughter, Beth, uh, she just couldn't wait to be born. Uh, she, she was almost born in the car to the hospital. And uh, we rushed in there and, and immediately she, she just was born. And uh, luckily the doctor was there and caught her in, in midair. And, uh, uh, I tell you, births are unpredictable, exciting, wondrous, joyous, uh, disruptive, wondrous, chaotic mess. And, and you get sort of that, some of that same birth kind of ideas in our text this morning uh, at this birthday of the church uh, bec because uh, you get some of that same chaotic, wondrous, joyous, disruptive, unpredictable mess that that began the church. Uh, it's not a neat and tidy story that we have here this morning. It's not a prim and proper liturgy. I got my doctorate in liturgical studies at Catholic University and I studied all the liturgies of the world and I studied the mass and how beautiful the mass is. This comes here, this gesture, that gesture. Absolutely beautiful, but uh, there's none of that in our text this morning. There's, there's, uh, it's not a neat and tidy story for those who like liturgies in, in good order. It's um, it's a wild, uh, wonderful time. Uh, it's, it's much more like my uh, friend's church in college, uh, Steve Grimes, who, uh, God rest his soul, now has passed. He took me to his Pentecostal church. Ever been to a Pentecostal uh, service? Uh, I was there, you know, a quiet, reserved Methodist, and he took me into the service, and there was people running in the aisles, and there was laughter, and there was people turning around on their pews and praying, and, and people and speaking in tongues, and... and uh, People were in the aisles stomping on the devil. It was, it was wonderful, a a amazing to me, uh, absolutely amazing. And the, the preacher asked for an altar call, and I, I said, I, I better get up to the altar real quick. And uh, it seems like it was safer up there. And there I was in my quiet little Methodist way, and the, the Pentecostal preacher came over and says, Who are you? I says, I, I, I'm Dave Thayer. I, I'm a Methodist. Don't slay me in the spirit. And he chuckled, and I chuckled, and he says, uh, this is a different kind of worship service. I said, yeah, yes, sir, it is. Uh, not like anything I've ever experienced in a Methodist worship service. And, uh, well, that's sort of like it was the first birthday of the church. Uh, taught me something about the Spirit. My, the birth of my three children taught me something about this text. Uh, let this be a warning to the church. Don't settle down too, too swiftly to a neat and tidy and prim and proper understanding of church life because uh, you're going to be miserable. Church life is unpredictable. Sometimes it's wild. Sometimes it's exciting. Sometimes it's absolutely joyous. Sometimes uh, it's just disruptive. Let this be a warning to you about Pentecost. Uh, Tom Long, uh, a great Presbyterian preacher out of uh, Princeton, uh, went, took his family to the local Presbyterian church. You know about Presbyterians, the frozen chosen. They talk about uh, Methodists being pretty stodgy. Presbyterians are, uh, uh, and he took his family to the Presbyterian church where he worshiped. And uh, the preacher decided to spice up things in the reading of the text. And so when it came to the sound of the violent wind, the, the preacher turned on a sound of the hurricane and the, the mighty wind and his children were coloring dutifully with the, the little children's bags that they gave out and they looked up and says, what's going on? And then when it came to the fire of tongues of uh, some women and men 
took out pom-poms red and waved them on top of their heads and it was a wild, wild moment. And then a time came for the speaking in other languages and people of all the congregation who could speak different languages, Chinese and Korean and Spanish and, and Polish and German and French all stood up and began to speak and, and recite the Lord's Prayer in their native languages. And the kids were looking around, wow, what's going on? And the choir breaks out, breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew. And the children are looking around and then somebody up in the balcony, they had a balcony of this Presbyterian church, someone looks down and begins laughing wildly and saying, look at those people, look at those people. They look like they're drunk. And the kid says, wow, wow, dad, this is really church this morning. And uh, Tom Long says, uh, well, maybe, maybe we need some of that excitement uh, around here. Uh, uh, some excitement in the, in the church. But let's, uh, let this be a warning to you, uh, prim and proper church folk, that you and I be. If you're a person that neatly tidies up, maybe you're an organizer at home, you place your socks and your underwear neatly in a row in your drawer. Your office is neat as a pen and nothing out of place. If you use lots of hairspray and makeup. Uh, at St. Andrews, where I was a pastor for 30 some years, people were horrified at my office. They would pass by and they would swoon because it was always disheveled. And I put a sign on the door of my office, uh, people will trump paper uh, all the time in my life. So I always thought that if a clergy man or woman's office is too neat, they, he has too much or she has too much time on their hands. Uh, they're not dealing with people. So um, listen, if you, if you like things neat and tidy in the church, uh, let, this, let this text be a warning to you about the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God uh, is just so unpredictable and so wild and sometimes so uh, messy, just like a birth. There was a study of clergy burnout and people interviewed uh, why they left ministry and it was discovered that a majority of the ones leaving ministry were second career folks who had been photographers, printers, organizers, and accountants in a previous life and they decided to go into ministry and then they decided to leave ministry. Why do you think that's so? Well, one researcher was asked, uh, why did you leave ministry? And each of them in their own career path said, uh, I always try to keep people in focus in church and people are always out of focus. I always try to organize things in the church and people are always so disorganized in, in the church. Uh, I kept, uh, as an accountant, he says, I kept trying to keep the church in black and the church always wound up in the red. And uh, the, the printer says, I always like to justify my, my edges and I couldn't justify anybody in the church, keep them straight. And uh, let this be a sign to you. People never stay put in the church in one place. A lot of people sometimes are out of focus. Ministry has really rarely justified lines. And the church is always sometimes disorganized. And yet, and yet, it's the power of the Spirit of God moving among us who, who seems to like things disruptive and sometimes a mess. Should it surprise you that when the spirit descends that it's, it's, it's sort of messy, everything seems to come unhinged and uncertain and open-ended and outside the lines on that first Pentecost birthday. After all, it's the spirit of God that lived in Jesus. And when you think about Jesus, he kept things in suspense all the time too. Jesus was always unpredictable too. I mean, one time Jesus was asked, Jesus, what is the kingdom of God like? And Jesus says, well, I know you're ready to plant your gardens. And I'm sure there are a lot of farmers in Davidsonville, and I'm sure you're planting your gardens neatly in a row, your tomato plants neatly in a row. Uh, I, I knew a gardener that planted his uh, garden with strings tied over each around the fence to make sure that everything was neatly in, in a row. And Jesus said, no, nope, that's not the way the gardener in the kingdom gardens. Well, how did you garden in the kingdom? And Jesus tells a parable. Remember this parable? Jesus says, and, the, and the, the gardener went out and took some seeds, and he, what did he do? He flung them everywhere. He flung them there, here, there. there. Some fell on hard soil, some fell on rocks, some fell on good soil. It, just the seeds. Is that any way to run a kingdom? Well, that's the way God does. He's, 
is just flinging grace all over the place. Who knows where it will end? Who knows where it will go? Uh, then he tells another garden story. Uh, maybe some of you just hate weeds in your garden. Um, Jesus, uh, someone's planting a garden. There's weeds in the garden. Should we pluck the, the weeds out? And Jesus said, no. The gardener says, let the weeds uh, grow with the wheat. Uh, you never know who might be a wheat or who might be a weed. Just this is the kingdom now. The kingdom who embraces even the weeds. Uh, don't, don't weed the garden. And we say, Jesus, is that any way to uh, run a kingdom? Uh, remember Jesus, this, this spirit, this Holy Spirit that birthed the church, lived in Jesus. And then Jesus goes to fishing and Jesus said, how should we fish? And um, well, the net's thrown out and all kinds of fish are drawn into the net. Should we call out the good fish and throw the bad fish away? No, 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 no. Bring all the fish in. The, 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 the net of God's love is, is broad and wide, Jesus says. Throw your net. And then Jesus says, how, how do you bake bread, Jesus? And Jesus says, uh, well, take some yeast. Oh, I have some fleshman yeast in the, in the cupboard. No, no, not no fleshman yeast, Jesus says. Take some of that rotting stuff in the, in the corner in that, in that jug in, that you put in the dark place and take some of that and mix it into the bread. And uh, what do you mean? I thought yeast was unclean. No, no, there are no rotten people in the world, Jesus says. Just mix them in and let the dough rise. It's a mess. Uh, what kind of church do we have here? What kind of kingdom is there? You never know where the spirit will move and go. He told these reckless, wild, crude stories that happens to be the son of God, that happens to be the kingdom of God. It's a mess. And so is it any surprise to us, the church? When the spirit of God descends upon those gathered, the birthday of the church, what is known as the church, his birthday. It's disruptive and unpredictable. There's Peter standing up. Peter, who was such a jerk to Jesus, designed him three times. There's Peter standing up and saying, no, 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 no. They're not drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. It's the power of God let loose in the world. Peter, we can't even hardly believe our ears. Peter, how wondrous is that? The Spirit, the spirit of God... Um, now, some of you may be thinking right now, Pastor Paz, it isn't the point of the church to make sure you're in, you're, you're in the kingdom and make proper distinction between saved and damned, make sure proper orthodox belief is being proclaimed. Isn't the point of the church is to keep everything neatly and tidy in a row to make distinctions. After all, the pews are bolted down and the seats are bolted down. Phyllis Stickle said we shouldn't hand you a bulletin on Sunday morning at all, uh, but a crash helmet. We should put seatbelts in the pews and lash you to your seats because you're in the ride for your life when it comes to the church. And I couldn't agree more. No, Jesus says, that's not the kingdom. Not according to the Jesus and the spirit let loose on this day. The point of the church, this church or any church, is to know a God that leaps over distinctions and boundaries and races and groups and orthodoxy and doesn't keep his un underwear neatly in a row, but a God who calls us to leap over boundaries distinctions to throw the seeds of God's grace all over the place where the spirit of love dwells. I just read the other day that a Baptist church was disfellowshipped from the Southern Baptist Church because it was a church that welcomed a gay couple into membership of their church. The Southern Baptist Church says, that's anathema. Oh, 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 church, uh, we got to be careful. we got to be careful when we, we make those distinctions and we, we turn people away from God's grace. Who knows who we might be turning away? Where the Spirit might birth us into to new ways. Uh, I know the United Methodist Church is at a crossroads and, and people want to leave to a more purified church. But let me tell you, there's a warning here in our text to every Methodist church. Don't limit God's grace. You never know 
where the Spirit might be born in some wild and wondrous and loving and joyous ways. So church, United Methodist Church, let this text be a warning to you and to me, the grandeur of God's grace and love. Did you know that in, in Celtic Christianity, the Holy Spirit is not represented by a meek and mild little, little dove, coo, coo, coo. You know, that's not, you know in Celtic Christianity that uh, the Holy Spirit is represented by a goose. The Holy Goose. Not the Holy Dove, but the Holy Goose. Have you ever been around geese? I know there's a lot of geese around here. They're noisy and they're messy and they're wild and they can't not be tamed. I, I walk around geese a lot of times. I walk about 10 miles a day every day and I walk around geese and I never know if one goose is going to attack me or chase after me or uh, be with me. Uh, it's, it's, geese are wild. In the early days of the church in Ireland, the window would always be left open on Pentecost Sunday just in case a wild goose happened to fly by and would be free to fly into the church to remind the church the Holy Goose of the Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is like a wild goose, then it cannot be pinned down or domesticated uh, like a goose aggressively approaching a picnic in the park. The Holy Spirit doesn't wait for us and requests our invitation, the Spirit just is wild and wondrous. We live with an untainable, strong, undomesticated spirit like a goose, like a birth. So much in our world and our lives breaks our hearts and strikes fear in our bones. So much in life is about overcoming hatred. My heart breaks for the folks in Buffalo, New York. I have an African-American granddaughter. And I think about my little, my little chalice growing up in a world where people hate her just because she's a darker skin color. It breaks my heart. This world breaks our hearts so much that we need this, this unwearied spirit of love that, that has a wide cast of its net. And grace is just given all over the place. When I went as a Catholic Jew, I was always invited to attend Mass before class began. I, I said, I'm a Protestant. I'm a Methodist. And you're welcome me to receive Mass. And they said, yes. Uh, come, receive with us. You're our brother. I had a deacon from St. Mary's Catholic Church say to me one time at our altar after I celebrated the Eucharist at a, a member who was also related to the Catholic tradition, he leaned over to me and says, you Methodists do it right, having an open table of love. Wow, I thought. How wonderful to be affirmed in that way. And my brothers and sisters, we spend all our days making distinctions. I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm a Protestant, I'm a Catholic, I'm Orthodox, I'm Orthodox, making sure we get it all figured out. And then comes the wild goose of the Holy Spirit birthing the church and the Spirit resting upon us in all of its diversity. And didn't the text say with all those funny nationalities, they all wound up listening and loving and caring, so much so that everybody thought that they were drunk. So you have come to church this morning to celebrate his birth. I want you to remember, as I remembered the birth of my three kids, to remember the wild goose of the spirit. The spirit of love, the wild goose, is a messy thing when it comes to the God we worship. And you will not be comfortable in the church. Jesus Christ, if you like things prim and proper, neat and tidy. Because we will love all kinds of people if we're the true church of Jesus Christ. We will love all kinds of people in here. 
and you just might sit in the same pew as a Republican or a Democrat on one of your sides or somebody from another race or someone who doesn't believe quite like you. And the Spirit will call you to jump over those distinctions and to find the birth of love growing in your heart. <laughs> I, I've really enjoyed uh, being with you. Uh, I pray that Wendy will have a wonderful vacation. What a wonderful, wonderful woman she is and a wonderful pastor you have. And uh, she's asked me a lot of times to uh, play the organ here at Davidsonville, which has been really a, a real treat to share some of my talents with you. And uh, sometimes when people hear me play the organ, they uh, think I play too loud. And you know what my response is as an organist? Um, yeah, I, I may play a little bit too loud uh, now and then, but listen, when we come to church, we're not at a funeral, but at a birthday party. Have you ever been at a birthday party when you're just singing the top of your lungs, happy birthday to you, and you're loud and wondrous, filled with laughter and joy and love. So if you think I play a little bit too loud, just remember, we ain't at a funeral. At a birthday party where love reigns supreme. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless the words of my heart. Amen. Welcome to this communion moment. I hope that you had a chance to pick up the communion elements from the church office, but if you didn't, it's fine. Just go into your kitchen now and find some bread and beverage that can become for you the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We begin with this prayer of confession. Holy Spirit, we're not sure we're ready for your awesome power to blow through our lives. We've grown comfortable with our familiar habits and our bland routines. We're afraid to give up our walk waking slumber and face the truth that we do not truly live. When we cling to our ways and the safety of familiar paths, wake us up, shake us up, heat us up. Walk with us, O oh God, and give us the courage to follow the way that is lit by the fire of your spirit. On this day of Pentecost, we pray for the audacity to ride the winds of change. Amen. Hear these words of comfort and assurance. God's awesome love is offered to you even when you are afraid or unsure of your faith. Know that God is with you. Be not afraid. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right, good, and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, who poured out tongues of fire on the disciples at Pentecost. You promised, Lord, to give our young people visions of a better world, and our elders dreams of peace. All who are led by your Spirit are your children, join heirs with Christ in both suffering and glory. And so, with your creatures on earth and all the heavenly chorus, we praise your name and join their resounding hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, Lord. And holy is your Son, Jesus, who sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, 
so that we would not be alone. On the night in which he gave himself up, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, saying, take, eat, all of you, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the healing of the world. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of grain and grape, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Make them to be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ, filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit for the healing of the whole world. Sender of dreams, spirit of truth, giver of visions, you are the one God to whom we offer our praise. Amen. Let us join together in those familiar words, the words that Jesus taught us, praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the, is the kingdom, kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. You may now eat and drink and remember. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you've been trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost found ourselves worn out from the same old fight and we've all run the things we know that just ain't right there's a better life there's a better life if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost a chain breaker If you got pain
Thank you so much for joining us this week. It was such an exciting week celebrating Pentecost and partaking in Communion Sunday together. And we would love to thank David Thayer so much for being our very first guest speaker in our Voices of the Prophets sermon series. We're excited for next week. We hope that you join us again, either in person or online, as we continue our Voices of the, Voices of the Prophets sermon series, hearing from our very own DS, Sarah Slickert.